Hello. Christmas Day? Man, you never want that to be the day when there's murders happening. Or murder ad adjacent things. Huh? What are you doing here, Kate? Ah, Monsieur Shields and Monsieur Edgeworth. Uh, allow me to apologize once again for all the trouble I caused you yesterday. Miss Hall looks a bit tired. Has Von Karma finished interrogating you? Yes. Aside from what happened to the ice sculptures, I was not at fault for anything else. Are you also here to meet with Master Jeff, Kate? Yes. I'm worried about how he's holding up. Hi, Bad. Detective Bad? Why are you here? I just happen to be here. I'll be heading to the crime scene soon. I don't think this is a place that people happen to be, though. I think he just wants the truth! Whoa! What happened to him? Hello? Master Jeff? What happened to you? Good lord, he's gone full Einstein and he has a thousand yard stare. What'd they do to him? What's your master? Why do you look so poor? I didn't get much sleep last night. The tribulation known as questioning was rather harsh. I'm just a little exhausted. They didn't let you sleep? Even for an interrogation, that's going too far! Detective Bad! The detective in charge of the initial investigation was also in charge of the interrogation. I don't like Von Karma's methods, but this was all I could do. He was the one who brought me here. It seems I was supposed to be interrogated for a little bit longer, though. Hmm. It seems that Detective Bad is looking out for Mr. Master in his own way. I guess every little bit counts. Oh my god. So, shall we inform Mr. Master about what happened yesterday, Raymond? Yes, sir! I got all my memos right here. Did you eat them? Mr. Master, we would like to inform you about yesterday's investigation. Yes. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Master Jeff, it's almost like your spirit's gone. Uh, my sugar levels are low, so... I might not seem like my usual energetic self. What's your master? Do we have anything that can give his spirit and his glucose a boost? Oh, wait, hang on. We actually do, don't we? We're holding on to, like, a, a handful of chocolates. And apparently they're his favorites. Oh, those chocolates. Are you giving them to me? Ah, those chocolates are... If possible, I would like to give them to you immediately. But it's uh, against the rules to give anything to the suspects in the detention center. I see. Regrettably, if those are the rules, then there's nothing we can do about it. No, oh, that's a bummer. Are you sure there's no way we can give them to him? Detective Bad. Looks like he noticed what we're trying to ask of him. <laughs> I'll inspect the chocolates, and if there are no problems, I'll think about it. Detective Bad. Thank you very much. Alright, I knew he could count on you, Detective Bad. I'm truly in your debt. Right, right here. I'm just figuring maybe, you know, getting a little pep in your step might help the whole situation at least a little. Take it. Thank you very much. Not a word to anyone else. It would cause problems for me later. Yes, of course. I apologize for making you go through so much trouble. Now, I shall partake in eating these delicious delights at once. I'm sorry for asking you to do something so dangerous, Detective Bad. <laughs> I only did what I wanted to do. I mean, I feel like it helps that he's, uh, you know, a fan of candy himself. <laughs> Why can't you just be honest here, Detective? Oh, how sweet. It's like I've come back to life. <laughs> did Kate make these chocolates? Uh, y y yes, sir, I, I did. H how does it taste? Well, I think he's a little bit more like his old self now. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you for the tasty treat. 
They're a bit misshapen, but so sweet and delicious. Thank you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. And above all, it helped you regain your spirits. Thank you for your concern. The food they serve here has been absolutely tasteless. And combined with the lack of sleep, I was thoroughly exhausted. Is the food here that bad? Just salt beef and stew. Your average prisoner fare. Ew. That is odd. I really could not taste anything. Hmm? Whatever. I'm about to head out to the crime scene. Uh, please, wait. Detective Bad. Uh, can you give us any new information? Yeah. I think I can. We've identified the victim. Just as you said, Isaac Dover was a sculptor who worked in France. It seems he went by the name Pierre Hoquet. Isaac Dover was Pierre Hoquet? How could that be? Monsieur Pierre Hoquet. So, Pierre Hoquet wasn't actually French, huh? I guess I'll need to eat that for some reason. Which is likely why he never showed himself in public while he worked under that name. The Zodiac sculptures, and they were his masterpieces, it seems. Although, they will remain forever unfinished. Unfinished? Even though they were his masterpieces? I guess they were works in progress. It seems he worked on them by season. And once he finished, the remaining Winter Constellations, his work would be done. Eh. The Winter Constellations are Taurus and Gemini, right? So those ice sculptures were his final pieces. It's heartbreaking that they melted. I cannot apologize enough. Ha! No, I wasn't blaming you or anything! Also, Dover was infamous for being greedy. Oh! Hello. He would charge the hundreds of thousands just to make a single sculpture. Is that really greedy? That sounds not that unreasonable for sculptures the size of like actual like full-grown adults. I'm pretty sure that's... I mean, I, I admit I don't know a lot about the sculpting world, but that doesn't seem terribly unrealistic. It seems like he always had money troubles. Their murder might be related to that, but it's still under investigation. So he had money problems even though he was a famous artist? I mean, artists are kind of traditionally not exactly known for rolling in the money. Do you know why he entered a dessert contest? Not yet. He kept it a secret, even from his family. I see. Well, that's certainly not good. It's time. I'm bringing in the replacement guard. I can't hang around here any longer than I have. Yes, I understand. Let's meet again later. Thanks, bad. You're a pretty cool dude. And now we're back to a generic guy. That detective is a kind soul. Indeed, he may not want anybody on the face of the earth to think that he is, but he is. He never strays from his own beliefs. He truly has a strong will. Ah, he's pretty scary when you first meet him. I see. Could you tell me everything that happened yesterday? Of course. Allow me to give you a report of our investigation. So this is what happened? I'm sorry for the trouble Kate has caused you. I'm truly very sorry. You have no need to worry so long as you have told the truth, Miss Hall. As much as I keep saying that, like seriously, as long as you tell the truth, it's all good. It's all good. Mr. Master, would you mind if I asked you a few questions as well? Yes, I shall divulge all that I know. All right, well, let's start talking. Please tell us about the other three contestants of the final round of your contest. Uh, let's see. Miss Delicious Desserts had a fantastic design. However, she broke the rules, so I could not recognize her as the winner. Up until the semi-finals, Mr. Gustavia's flavors and design were to my liking. Unfortunately, both the taste and appearance of his final entry left much to be desired. And there was something strange about his dessert in the semi-finals. Something strange? Both Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's desserts had the exact same taste. They had different designs, but in terms of taste, it was like eating the same thing. What did they look like? Ah, well, there should be a picture of them at my mansion. Please, uh, allow me to show you later. Certainly. Thank you very much. And then, there was Mr. Dover's Sherbert sculptures. Oh, they were absolutely heavenly. Hmm? Did you have a chance to taste his creations? If I recall correctly, his body was discovered in the middle of judging. Yes, but I was not informed of this until after the judging had finished. Since he was not present in the room, I helped myself to a piece of his edible liar. 
It was fantastically delicious! I was so moved, I broke into song! Wait, w wait a moment, please. Did, did you say the liar was delicious? Could you please give us a little more detail about that? That's a very weird thing to ask about, but sure, I can talk about that. Then that means somebody replaced what was eaten from the liar with something salty? Ooh, and why? What? You ate the liar from the sculpture in Mr. Dover's room, correct? Yes, the one that was in the same glass case as the Gemini sculpture. P please have a look at this picture, Mr. Master. Did you eat from this liar that's missing the strings? Yes, that liar originally had strings. I ate them. However, I ate them all, resulting in what you see here in this picture. So, the strings on the liar were missing because he ate them. Actually, Delicia ate part of the same liar that you did. However, she said it was so salty that she could not eat it. You don't say. That means... There might be a problem with my sense of taste after all. A problem with your sense of taste? How so? There is a taste disorder called hypogesia, in which you lose the ability to taste salt. Perhaps I have contracted this illness? Is that a real thing? Can you just... Is, is that a thing you can just do? Also, if you could... If you can't taste salt... Well, that could bode poorly in certain instances. I just never realized it since I eat nothing but sweets. However, I know now with certainty. So that's why you couldn't tell what the food they served here tasted like. Oh! No! For a pastry chef to lose their sense of taste is fatal! I mean, if it's just salt, I suppose it doesn't really matter that much. Even if there is treatment for taste impairment, there isn't a cure for it yet. But it's probably best that you let the police know so you can receive a medical examination. No, that won't be necessary. There is a recipe in my mansion specifically for making the cure. You what what? A recipe for a drug that will cure your taste impair- What? Why would you have that? Yes. Please look for it later when you return to the mansion. Also, wait, 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 wait. You have the recipe to a drug that cures an ailment that Gregory just said doesn't have a cure? Okay, why do you have that? Especially seeing as how you didn't even know you had that disorder, why would you have a recipe to cure it? And if you had a recipe to cure, like, literally any ailment whatsoever, if, 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 if priorly it's been known to not be curable, merely treated, and you can cure it reliably, why on earth would you hold on to it? Monsieur Master! But that means revealing the... It's... We should no longer conceal it from Mr. Gregory. Yes, sir. I understand. If that is what you wish. A recipe for a special drug. Just what are they hiding? Why would two pastry chefs even have that? Well then, I must be returning to the mansion now. So I will take my leave. Yes, we'll be heading there later as well. Okay. What is it, Monsieur Master? You should not live for my sake. Eh? You should reconsider your lifestyle so that you can live by yourself, even if I were no longer around. P please do not say things like that! I simply cannot live without you, Monsieur Master. I promise to wait for you until you return. Excuse me! Knowing the fact that this guy ends up staying in prison, that's it's obscenely depressing. And honestly, it just further makes me think that she might have actually done something in the present. But that wouldn't explain why she would do it in the past. Hmm. Alright, that's a lot to ponder about. Ah, Kate! Catherine. Master Jeff, Kate was crying. Why did you say something so cruel? I'm worried about her. Catherine always puts me before herself. What do you mean? She collects Pierre Huquette's works and makes sweeps. All to make me happy, nothing more. That is the only reason she does anything. <clears throat> she always puts aside her own preferences and things that she wants to do herself. I want Catherine to choose to live her own life. I do not want her to waste her valuable life because of me. Is that so? Hmm. He 
thinks of Miss Hall as his own daughter. And he would want his children to choose their own path in life. And a parent would do anything to protect their own children. That feeling. I also know it well. Imagine you would, Greg. Ah, that should do it for the questions. We must return to the scene of the crime. Ah, is it already time to leave, I see? So, will my tribulations of questioning resume? We should take measures against their interrogations from our side as well. Can you ask the police about that? I can, but I have other ways in mind as well. When the time comes. <laughs> you are a dependable man. I shall be counting on you. Master Jeff, we'll come here every day with reports of our progress. And we'll bring Kate too. Yes. Thank you very much. I shall be looking forward to it. Mr. Master, know that the police will be attempting to get you to confess. I'm sorry to ask an innocent soul like yourself to bear with these painful experiences. I bow to you. But please hold on for now. If you confess, I am positive that Von Karma will use that to his advantage. And that will make helping you all that much more difficult. That's an actual very real problem in real life. Forcing confessions out of innocent people. I mean, once they do that, they're completely screwed. And you might think that, well, why on earth would they ever do that? They have methods. I don't have the time or the uh, the desire to get into all of the dirty details about that. But it's a thing. It's a real thing. Whew. Never confess if you're an innocent person. My god. <sighs> I understand. I shall do my best. If you believe in me until the bitter end, I will definitely get you out of here. Man, everything about this is sad knowing how it's going to go down. I don't like that. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Detective Bad, thank you for helping us earlier. I bow to you. Yes, thank you. Oh, he bows to you too. He's picking up a mannerism. <laughs> Thanks for what? <laughs> ah, there's no need to be shy about it. <laughs> Enough about that. I suppose you intend to investigate today too? Of course. We still need more information to prove Mr. Master's innocence. I'm sorry, but apart from this patio, you're not allowed to investigate anywhere else. What? So you're saying we can't investigate? I'm guessing this is Von Karma's doing. Yeah, Von Karma's a bit on edge at the moment. He still hasn't received the autopsy report. Moreover, the only ones in this mansion are Miss Hall and the police. So, don't get your hopes up on speaking with the people connected to this case. Von Karma's being completely unreasonable! He's gone too far! Well, the good news, Ray, is one day in the far-off future, I mean, well, sadly, he's going to get away with oh so much more crime, but eventually, one day in the far-off future, he will end up in prison. I assume for the rest of his life. Detective Bad, what do you intend to do? I promised I'll do anything I can to assist you. You have my thanks, and I bow to you again. We won't let any of Von Karma's dirty tricks get the best of us. I've navigated his bull plot before. I can probably do it again. Did it bad? Is it all right if we investigate the fountain patio? Yes, but we already finished checking everything, except for the fountain. That's fine. As long as there is still something, then I shall continue investigating. I mean, on top of everything else, I mean, we've long since established that the police typically don't get everything. Also, I, okay, we're hanging with Bad again. I find it interesting that Ray is never the partner. What? All right, we'll talk about the investigation, why don't ya? What do you think about the case, Detective Bad? The police's opinion is the same as Von Karma's. But I don't buy that. The investigation of this patio is also lacking as well. I've already talked to the labbies. You can ask them anything you want. I appreciate that. Thank you, Detective Bad. <laughs> I'm not really doing it for you. I just want an investigation I can approve of. Yeah, well, as long as our interests align, I don't really care why you do the things that you do, my dude. What say thee, Ray? Raymond, could we talk for a bit? Sure thing, Mr. Edgeworth. Fire away. All right, let's talk about the case. Raymond, have you noticed anything about the case? A lot, actually. Mr. Dover's body was found in Mr. Master's room. 
Hang on, let me eat that for some reason. Yep. And we found the murder weapon, a rock salt lamp, and Miss Delicious Candy Castle. Huh. <sighs> Miss Delicious's desserts aren't so dreamy anymore, huh? Yes. You're right. And Kate looks sad, too. I asked you to note, not to dote. But I, I, did I do something wrong? I'm getting a little worried about your future. Ha! <laughs> ah, oh, fun. This case was your first investigation, huh, Raymond? Yeah! And I've been taking memos on everything that's happening. It truly is an inspiration to be investigating with you, Mr. Edgeworth. You aiming to be an attorney? Yeah! Defense attorneys are heroes of justice who help those in need. The moment I saw how amazing Mr. Edgeworth was in court, I decided to be his apprentice. But detectives also defend people. But I already have my heart set on becoming a defense attorney. If he maybe saw a really cool detective at some point, that would have been what he did, but it's not what he chose, so let's roll with it. <laughs> Is that so? Well, good luck then. Perhaps Detective Bad wants an apprentice too? He sort of gets one in Gumshoe. I, I say sort of, it takes a long time, and I'm not exactly sure if it was 100% to his liking, but, you know, it, it counts. Anyway, is that a drum set that you can eat? It's a drum in the shape of a cake. Oh, I thought it was a cake in the shape of a drum. Ha! <laughs> uh, it was probably used in piece of cake. Detective Bad, about this drum. It's already been investigated. The inside is hollow. But there's no sign that anything was hide hidden inside. It's not related to the case. You know exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I may have a sweet tooth, but it doesn't mean I have candy for brains. I mean, but what if you did have jelly beans for brains? That'd just be unfortunate. All right, well, you said that there was the apparently the entire fountain that wasn't investigated. These angel statues look like they're eating chocolate fondue. It could be cheese fondue. Why does it have to be chocolate? It would see. Uh, well, I mean, I guess because it's a pastry chef's house. Yeah, that makes sense. It would seem these angel statues are also pure or Hoquette's work. As expected, they're very well made. Looks just like the real thing. So, you've seen a real angel before, Detective Bad? Pshh. Defense attorneys. Always the first to find fault with everything. <laughs> Perhaps that was wrong of me. Yeah, but it was funny, so we're gonna have to go ahead and say that it was okay. What? Are you investigating, exactly? Sir, I'm testing the water in the fountain for foreign matter, sir. Have you found anything? It seems there's both chocolate and sherbet mixed in with the fountain water. It matches the chocolate from Jeff Masters' room. And the sherbet that melted in Isaac Dover's room, they all share the same composition. The fountain water circulates through the streams that flow from each of the four rooms. Perhaps the melted sherbet flowed into the fountain. I mean, that'd make sense. Also, someone's blood was detected as well. What are you saying? How could there have been blood in the fountain? Detective Bad, please think back to our investigation of the crime scene. Detective Bad, please look at the crime scene carefully once more. Ah, the bloodstain that should have remained at the crime scene has disappeared. I definitely didn't get any reports about the bloodstain being cleaned up. The blood disappeared from the crime scene. Also, part of the treasure chest was missing too. Perhaps the blood in the fountain belongs to this person. Um, I mean... There's only one person I know of that has been bleeding, so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably the guy who was <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> that, that, that's my that's my current guess. Mm, victim. Let's run a comparison with the blood on the murder weapon. Wouldn't the blood? I mean, it, I don't know enough about blood tests to be able to actually discuss that in any shape, way, or form. W wouldn't it be diluted enough? Could you still be able to figure out whose blood it was after it mixed around in water like that? Did, did Crash Bandicoot just find one of the crystals? What was that sound effect? <laughs> in a match. It's a match. The blood in the fountain is Dover's. I wonder why the criminal spilled the victim's blood into the fountain. That's more than a little weird. Okay. Okay, well, if that's what we're getting from... The oh, hi. I didn't realize you were here. I mean, I knew you were here, but I didn't realize you were in this room. Miss Hall, I've come to investigate today. I bow to you. Uh, Monsieur Edgeworth... I apologize for my disgraceful behavior earlier. Ah, it's all good. Kate. She still looks a bit down. What Master said earlier must have been a real shock to her. I've prepared the photo I took of the desserts during the semifinals. P 
please, take a look. Ooh. Wow. Delicious cake is so cute. But apparently it's probably made out of plastic. Monsieur Master also praised the design of Delicious work very highly. Monsieur's... Oh, Monsieur's Gustavia and Dover worked... Uh, gained high praise for both taste and design, but... Monsieur Master said it felt like he was eating the exact same thing twice. But it seems that their desserts had completely different tastes for the finals. Hmm. Was there anything else that was different between the finals and the semifinals? It's nothing major, but there was something. During the contest, Monsieur Gustavia's son always came to see him, but... There was no sign of him at the finals. His son came to visit? I wonder if there's any significance behind that. Would you mind leaving this photo with me? Certainly! Anything to aid in the investigation? I would hope that she's helping so much because she is, in fact, not a culprit in some manner. That would be nice. And here's the recipe book that contains the special drug for curing taste disorders. Yeah, can we talk about that for a little bit? What the hell? That cover looks familiar. Yeah, this was apparently the prize. Wasn't this framed in Master's room? Since it's also the prize for the contest, we put it out on display. Eh. So the contest prize, Angel's Recipe, was the cure to a taste disorder. Wasn't just a recipe for desserts? That's right. We've informed the participants, but it seems you all don't know yet. So the participants knew about the true contents of the Angel's Recipe. Huh. I see. How did you discover how to... How did you discover how you were going to be able to cure this? And why did you have the cure for it? And how did you figure out the cure for it if you didn't even know that anybody had it in the first place? Please tell me all you know about the angel's recipe. I desperately need to know. Explain yourself! So the angel's recipe contains the formula for the drug. Yes, it's a recipe book for new drugs that haven't been released to the public yet. It's sold to a, if sold to a pharmaceutical company, I'm sure it would fetch a substantial price. Why is something like that a prize in the contest? Thank you, Bat. That is such a good question. Monsieur Master is the only heir to the chairman of the Master Group. Master Group? That name sounds familiar. They're a pharmaceutical company who deal with a wide range of products. The heir to a pharmaceutical company became a pastry chef? Huh. Well, kudos to him for not coasting. They've become big news recently with the release of Cold Killer X! Isn't that the thing? Yeah, that's the thing that, uh, that, that, that Phoenix took when he was in college! I often use the Cold Killer products, but I've never once seen you with a cold. Yeah, because it works so well, duh! I'd like to hear more about the Master Group. Give me this information, lady type! Let's go, go, go! Did Mr. Master not want to follow in his parents' footsteps? Monsieur Master wanted to bring joy to people with his desserts, not with pharmaceuticals. His parents also wanted him to become a great pastry chef and supported him. Oh! Okay. When his parents died, the recipe book was left to him as his inheritance. Why would he give away a memento of his parents as a prize in the contest? There were always people who were after it, something which troubled Monsieur Master. But just giving away the memento would have been disrespectful to his parents. So he decided to pass it over to someone he acknowledged. That would explain why Delicia was even here. I mean, she didn't just want food. She also she is a pharmacist. That, okay, all right, that's fair. Also, I could easily see why somebody would try to kill somebody else over it, because it's probably worth a fair chunk of money anyway. You know. In fact, we heard that Iced Over, Isaac Dover, whatever I, you know. Uh, I, we know that he has money problems. Maybe he attacked somebody and they then he got killed in self-defense because he saw somebody as competition and wanted them out of it and then ended up, he ended up getting killed maybe? I'm just throwing out theories here. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm just want to I just want to theorize. He decided to pass it over to somebody acknowledged. And the members of the master group they approved of that. Information about new drugs being passed on to outsiders. And of course they objected. Uh, that's why Delicia participated in the contest. On the order of the Master Group, she was requested to win the championship. You knew Delicia's true identity from the start? Yes. In order for her to win, I told her Monsieur Master's tastes and preferences. Why did you help her? 
I helped her in order to protect Monsieur Master and the Master Group. If the drug recipes were given to another company, he would be reprimanded by the board. I wanted to return the recipes to the company in a way that Monsieur Master would accept. So it was due to Miss Hall's help that Delicia was able to reach the finals. That explains how she got this far despite not knowing anything about anything. Speaking of which, Mr. Dover wasn't a pastry chef either. He sure did well to make it to the finals, considering he's just a sculptor. I mean, he had big bricks of... of, of sherbet. He, he, he carved it. Sculpted. Science. Yes. For him to be able to make such fine desserts despite being a sculptor. From the sherbet sculptures he made for the finals, it's clear to see he has great talent, but... Could he really have made that by himself? That is all I know. Is there anything else I can do to help? Potentially. To save Mr. Master, she's trying to help as much as she can. May we perhaps have some more of that tea from yesterday, please, Miss Hall? That would be so very kind. And I'm sure that would help us get on with the investigation. Yeah, it's like some of Kate's tea, too! Right, understood. I'll be back in a minute. Alright. Also, you said I'd like some, obviously. Kate looks a bit better now. And I guess that's the end of that. Alrighty, I've had enough. We've gathered information about all the contestants. And yet, we still haven't heard Gustavia's side of the story. He's pretty much the only missing link in all of this. Why did you enter Mr. Dover's room, Mr. Gustavia? Ooh, I mean, I had a reason, but I'm not gonna let you know. Because I am the jerk. How dare you call him an ignoramus? How dare you call anybody an ignoramus, considering who you are? What exactly was he doing in Mr. Dover's room? And moreover, something is odd about his semi-final entry. A pastry chef bad at design and a sculptor skilled only at designing? Were they in cahoots? It would have been extremely difficult for either of them to win the contest alone. So one of them was able to make good tasting food, but it looked terrible, and the other was able to make good looking food that tasted terrible. Oh! Maybe that's why it tasted so salty and terrible. Because he's not good at actually- Oh, that's interesting. Could it be that Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's connection is? Detective Bad, we have reason to suspect the actions of Dane Gustavia. Yeah. It is imperative that we find a way to contact him at once. Oh. This conversation is most interesting. No! Do you ever do anything else other than butt yourself into situations I don't want you in? However, I cannot allow you to speak with Mr. Gustavia. Fun karma. I have already conducted my interrogation of him, and I say, no, he did nothing wrong. It is not necessary for him to speak any further, especially to a mere defense attorney. <laughs> but I will answer your questions in that fool's place, will you? It seems Von Karma intends to prevent me from meeting Gustavia in person. I understand. In that case, I have but one thing to ask you. Yes? I'd like to know the relationship between Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. Alright. What you gonna say? Gustavia and Dover's relationship? It's obvious the only relationship they had was that they happened to participate in the same contest. Huh. Okay. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing more to say. You're terrible at giving testimony. What? How are we supposed to understand anything from so little? Don't worry, it's incredibly easy to crack it open. We'll get more info out of it. If you want Von Karma to divulge the truth, we have no choice but to present evidence. It's all too obvious that he's hiding something. He may have an extraordinary high opinion of himself, but that doesn't make him any less act you know, any less actually like obvious. He's got a lot of tells. Anyway, okay, if everything is exactly as you so say, I would like to present to the non-existent courtroom that we are pretending to be in, why exactly did their, there we go, why did their foods taste completely identical? I feel like that would only be possible if the same person made both. That's just my personal thought, though. Prosecutor Von Karma, I'd like you to look at these desserts. The desserts were made for the contest semifinals. Don't you think these two have a particularly impressive design? <laughs> Just what are you getting at? These two desserts were made by Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. I wouldn't exactly call Mr. Gustavia's design skills praiseworthy. And yet, for the semifinals, he was able to produce something comparable to Mr. Dover's. 
Furthermore, these two desserts have the exact same flavor. Yeah, well, how about why don't I should I care, eh? How about that? What are you trying to say? Well, let me adjust my tie here. All right. I'm saying it's possible they collaborated with each other on their entries. Prosecutor Von Karma, please take a closer look at their desserts. Do it right now, you nerd! At first glance, they may look completely different. But even though their designs are different, it's clear they were made from the same materials. That's true. All the same colors are on display. Is that so? Well, are you going to attest that you're apparently blind? Can't see things? Colorblind, at least? Hmm? Same flavor and composition. It's impossible to dismiss their similarities as coincidence. The very existence of these two desserts points to a link between Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. <laughs> Since you already know this much, I'll tell you the truth. You will? Did Von Karma know about their collaboration? He knows about a lot of things he refuses to tell us. It's kind of his thing. However, what I'm going to say is not going to help your case at all. So you say. We'll find out real fast. Their real connection. If you want to know about Gustavia and Dover's connection so badly, I'll tell you. Last night, when I interrogated Gustavia, he told me about his connection with Dover. Until the day before the finals, they worked on their desserts together. All right, well, that's still incredibly short, but at least it's new information. You knew about their co cooperation all this time, didn't you? Why would you conceal the truth? Because I want to win in court and you want you to lose and I'm not a good person? I'll say that. I would appreciate it if you didn't sully my reputation. Oh, we gonna do a whole lot more than that, my dude. <laughs> Until I explain my point in court, I avoid giving away unnecessary details. I was merely saving you time. How could he act like this and keep the truth from us? His concealment of the truth is something I simply cannot ignore. All right, well, I can't really contradict anything that was said, so I feel like the obvious thing to do is to go over yonder. Head on over to this and get ourselves a little bit more information. Can you maybe tell us why they were doing this or anything of that general nature? Why do you think Mr. Gustavi and Mr. Dover collaborated? Why? Because Gustavi had poor design sense and Dover was a novice at baking. Without the help of each other, they would never have made it through a single round. If so, what was their mutual goal? Why cooperate until the finals? The finals will be fought on our own merits, Gustavia said, and he ended their collaboration. Gustavia's goal was to obtain the title of the world's greatest pastry chef. Well, I mean, between the three people that were, you know, actually working here, I feel like Gustavia was the one who was going to end up winning. Even if his food ended up looking terrible, at least it would taste good, and also not be made out of plastic and cream. It seems his pride as a pastry chef won out in the end. Entry in the finals would certainly have been hollow had he cheated. So he believes that their cooperation only went as far as the semifinals. But what if it really continued through the finals? Prosecutor Von Karma, could you explain their cooperation in a little more detail? <laughs> Very well. All right, what do you got? Why? Because Gustavia had poor design sense and Dover was an novice at baking. Yes, yes. Their cooperation lasted only through the semifinals. For the finals, they were on their own. Okay, but hang on, don't I? Ba -ba 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 -ba. I uh, Dover Sherbert was most delicious, but the liar part was very salty. Yeah. Then why was his food so. Well, why did his food taste good? That don't make no sense. It was just one small part of it that tasted like crap. You say that Mr. Gustavi and Mr. Dover did not collaborate during the finals. Well, that's strange. Delicia testifies that Dover's Sherbert was most delicious. Being a novice chef, I doubt he could have done all that by himself. Perhaps the two of them cooperated during the finals as well. Defense attorney! How many times do I have to tell you? Delicia Scone's subjective opinion cannot be admitted as evidence. There is still a chance that a novice chef could make something tasty. My wife is an amateur, yet her cooking rivals that of world-class chefs. I... Okay, well, at least, you know, I may... That's always been weird about Von Karma. Sometimes he just randomly compliments his family members. Well, also, and yet, anytime we ever saw Francisca, even it was never that kind to her. Very weird. How is that not a subjective opinion? <laughs> Look at that face! <laughs> Smile through the... I'm really seeing the miles in this expression, I'm not gonna lie. 
If Miles let himself smile, that is one that that is a face he'd make all the time. Moreover, even if you take the pharmacist's testimony to be true, it changes nothing. She also mentioned that a part of the sherbet was very salty. Which means you can hardly call his entry for the finals perfect. <laughs> what? No more objections? Is there no way I can prove their collaboration? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? There's something that's been bugging me. Hmm? What is it? The desserts Mr. Dover made for the finals would have taken a long time to make, right? Indeed. They were frozen sculptures, after all. How would he have had the time to sculpt it after it was frozen? Let alone help Mr. Gustavia with his design as well. The way I see it, just waiting for the sherbet to freeze would have used up all of his time. Hmm. Just how was he able to make those sherbet sculptures? That is a good point. Thank you, Ray. Raymond? You may have a promising future after all. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, okay, well, you're not really helping your case with the eating of notes thing. I was literally about to compliment you, but you know what? Never mind. Redacted. Thanks to you, I have noticed one more possibility. Eh. I'm just eating paper. That's right. Mr. Dover's sherbet needed time to freeze properly. And the contest time limit would not have been enough. The method Mr. Dover used to make his sherbet within the time limit was... It was prepared in advance, it was frozen on that day, they weren't desserts. I'm gonna go ahead and say they were made in advance. I would explain why they also tasted good. It makes as much sense as anything else, I would imagine. If the sherbet was prepared in advance, all he needed to do was sculpt it. You. Just what are you mumbling about? Never you mind. Please excuse me. I finally realized your earlier view was correct. Eh? M Mr. Edgeworth? What are you doing? Oh. So you're finally admitting defeat? Oh, hell no, no. All I am admitting to is the truth of one of your statements. Dover and Gustavia's collaboration lasted only until the day before the finals. It is exactly as you said. They only cooperated until the day before the finals. The sculptures in Mr. Dover's room were all made out of sherbet. Such an amount would most likely need to be left overnight to freeze. Which means Mr. Gustavia prepared Mr. Dover's sherbet in advance the day before. Gagabragaburg! That's right. So you realize Gustavia's cooperation ended the day before the finals. Then, why did Mr. Dover not help Mr. Gustavia in return? The views of the dead are of no concern to me. Yeah, yeah, we, we know. You're kind of a scumbag. We don't really care, though. If you aren't going to answer that, I'll need to get in touch with Mr. Gustavia himself. Or was your interrogation not quite as thorough as you claim? Oh, <laughs> ingrate! You dare mock me? Oh, I dare! And I ain't got no regrets on that front. That was not my intention, but I do have a problem with your attitude. Seriously, how could someone as old and prestigious as you be such an entitled jackass? I want you to give us a clear reason why you can't speak to Mr. Gustavia in person. Hm. A clear reason? Gustavia and Dover's collaboration has no bearing on this case. Lies and slander! You claim their collaboration is irrelevant? If Mr. Gustavi and Mr. Dover's relationship had turned sour, it could serve as a motive for murder. You're saying that Gustavi and Dover's collaboration was linked to the motive for the murder? If that were the case, why did he not conceal it? After all, we found out about this collaboration from Gustavia himself. Huh. If you really are a lawyer, show us evidence that gives us reason to suspect Gustavia. Uh... Huh. Only one of Mr. Gustavia's actions has been suspicious so far. Doubtless Von Karma already knows of this fact. This... could be a trap by Von Karma. Huh. <laughs> What's wrong, defense attorney? Not going to answer? But... I mustn't back down now. Mr. Gustavia sneaked into Mr. Dover's room. His reasons for this are currently unclear. But the very fact that he secretly entered the victim's room is reason enough to suspect him. <laughs> if that's the extent of it, I can dispel those doubts. I knew it. Was it a trap after all? Probably, that's kind of how he works. I was intending to save this for the courtroom, but I'll make a special exception. We wouldn't want to prolong the trial with unnecessary information, would we? Take a look at this. This is... What am I looking at? 
This is a photo of Gustavia and Dover. And their sons. Interesting. Gustavia entered Dover's room in order to steal this photo. To steal the photo? It seems their son attended the same elementary school. Apparently he thought that he'd been suspected if people found out he and Dover were acquainted. I mean, I guess that's mostly fair-ish. Yes, just like you're doing now. There's something suspicious about Gustavia's actions. No further room for argument. Yeah, come on! He's still adamant on not letting us meet with Mr. Gustavia. I have an investigation to return to. I have no more time to waste on the likes of you. Sigh! Curse that Von Karma! Calling us a waste of time! What should we do, Mr. Edgeworth? At this rate, Master Jeff will be... Von Karma is... busy? Of course. Why would he be so busy? Both the body and murder weapon have been found, and he already has his suspect. The police should have more than enough evidence to prove Mr. Master's guilt. If that's the case, then why is Von Karma still investigating the crime scene? That's a good query! Mr. Edgeworth, is there something wrong? It seems I have been overlooking a matter of vital importance. Considering that he already has the evidence he needs to convict Master Masters, I feel that Von Karma isn't as composed as he should be. I didn't even tell Detective Bad the full results of the investigation. Could you please stop doing that while I'm talking, Ray? Yeah. But Karma's a bit on edge at the moment. He still hasn't received the autopsy report. That's interesting. For why? Furthermore, something vanished from the crime scene and we still don't know why. Oh! Oh, hang on! I think some things just got fired off in my brain! Hello! Detective Bad, please look- yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the blood stain was removed. Yep, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Alright. Disappeared blood. I getcha, I getcha. I definitely didn't get any reports about the blood stain being cleaned up. But the strangest thing we found wasn't in Mr. Master's room at all. It's a match. The blood in the fountain! Hello! How did the blood get in there? I think I know how it went down. Especially thanks to uh, how things happened in the present times. <laughs> I think I got this! I think I got this! Mr. Dover's blood vanished from Mr. Master's room and somehow found its way into the fountain. What does this mean? Oh! Alright, we're going into it already! Alright, uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say blood in the water fountain. Blood stain disappeared. I think that is important. Let's close these together. Sha 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 sha. Although the victim's blood wasn't found in Mr. Master's room, it was detected in the water fountain. There would be no need for the killer to conceal the blood stains after the body was found. It's unnatural that only the blood stains that were found with the body disappeared. Unless the body was moved, the blood would have still remained on the chocolate. Don't tell me, someone removed the body and then erased the blood stains? Alright, alright, alright. Well, then we only have these two things left, so no autopsy report? And was the body moved? Fuse them together and what do you get? The truth! It's possible that the body was removed from the crime scene. And the autopsy report still has not arrived. Although we have a murder weapon and a suspect, we don't know much about the body. I've been investigating under the assumption that the body had been discovered. Perhaps this assumption was wrong from the very beginning. We don't know where the body is?! Why didn't Von Karma give Detective Bad the autopsy report? To understand that, yes, I must turn my logic around! My thinking shouldn't be, why is Von Karma hiding information about the body? But rather, what if Von Karma doesn't even have the information to begin with? What happens if I think of it like that? It's possible that the body was removed by the police for auto- wasn't removed by the police for autopsy. It was moved and hidden by the real killer. Mr. Edgeworth? 
I've heard many dark rumors surrounding Von Karma. He's a prosecutor who forges evidence, fabricates testimonies, and makes backroom deals. Yeah, I've heard that too! But what does that have to do with this? I tried to avoid judging others based on rumors. And I didn't let those rumors influence my opinion on Von Karma. Until today. It seems he is a man who would distort the truth. Distort the truth? You don't mean... Forgery? I do. And I can't allow him to get away with this! I must return to the prosecutor's office for now. Not a word to that attorney. Roger! <sighs> Boy howdy do I have some information for you. Or rather, there's some information I'd like from you. What do you want, defense attorney? I want to know the truth that you've been hiding. Fool. Are you trying to mislead the police's investigation again? If you interfere with the investigation anymore, I'll be forced to reprimand you myself. Objection. I'd like to see you freaking try, freaking Dracula. Police? No. My objection is with you. What? Isn't it a prosecutor's job to ensure justice for criminals? <laughs> what are you saying? I have no time to debate the job of a prosecutor with you. However, I will tell you one thing. My job is to ensure all those I prosecute are found guilty. Before the perfect proof, there can be no room for doubt. And to find the perfect proof, you would even stoop to forgery? Ha! I was wondering what you were going on about. You intend to accuse me of forgery, don't you? Oh, wow, you're not as dumb as I thought. Yes. And it's for that reason, you did not allow Detective Bad to investigate. What do you mean? The real reason Detective Bad wasn't investigating was not so he could keep an eye on us. It was to hide the fact that you never found the body. But They never found the body? You cretins! You will cease with these ludicrous accusations! I will not tolerate any further insults! You will, and you shall! In that case, let us verify the body! If you do, we'll have evidence that shows whether I'm right or not! <laughs> the burden of proof falls on you, defense attorney! I have no reason to comply with your baseless conjecture! You must have noticed it too! The lack of blood stains at the crime scene! So why did the blood vanish? And more importantly, where did it go? Foolishness. Why would anyone erase just the blood in the chest that contained the body? Yes, that's exactly right. If the body had been found there, the disappearing blood stains would have no meaning at all. However, what if the body was already gone? To erase the traces of the body being there, one would have to get rid of the blood stains as well. Why make such a fuss over those blood stains? It seems like a trivial detail to me. Yeah, I bet it would. Or are you saying that you can show me where those bloodstains went? In court, everything must be said with evidence. Isn't that right, Von Karma? In that case, I'll show you the evidence supporting my claim. Which piece of evidence shows where the blood in Mr. Master's room went? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here we go. Here we go! Here we go! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> There were traces of the victim's blood found in the fountain. <laughs> oh, got you sweating now. Traces of Mr. Master's chocolate were also found in this very fountain. In other words, the blood was washed down the stream, which then flowed into the fountain. All of this points to only one possibility. After the body was removed, someone erased the blood states. Von Karma. Where was the body you really found? If you really found the body, you should be able to answer! You! How? How do you know this information? How do you know the results of the water composition test on the fountain? Because I allowed them to investigate. Bad! Always a thorn in my side! From here on out, I will not allow you to associate any further with this case! It's not like you were letting me do much anyway. Von Karma, you still haven't answered my question. Or, 
Are you admitting to the fact that you didn't find the body after all? <laughs> you say I never found the body? Where is your evidence? He's never going to confess. I have nothing further to say to you. Gregory Edgeworth, this matter will be decided in court. We'll see just how well your logic holds up there. Considering the fact that we know for 100% certainty that Gregory was able to get that information out there. And there was a mark put on his record enough to drive him as cuckoo bananas as it did for him to do all of the unspeakably horrible things that he ended up doing. There's a small, small, small grain of goodness in that fact. He was able to make Von Karma look like a complete and total chump in front of the court. <sighs> you gotta take Saul's where you can get it. We'll see just how well your logic holds up there. Von Karma! I know your methods are wrong! I promise without fail, I will expose the truth you've hidden! <laughs> no retort for that one. Detective Bad? I'm sorry. It's because you let me investigate that... No. This was bound to happen sooner or later. This is also the first time I've been restricted in my investigation. Your theory that they never found the body sounds pretty close to the mark. That... I will make clear in court. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Even though I'm no longer in charge of this case. Then, though I'm very sorry about this, I have one more favor to ask of you. Hmm? Hey, what are you guys whispering about? I want to know too. <laughs> this will be my trump card in court. The information I've gathered up until now should be enough to prove Mr. Master's innocence. But, if all else fails, I'll have this ready. Your trump card? <laughs> You'll see at the trial. Wow, I get to be at the trial too? Of course, you are my assistant after all. <laughs> I'll be an ace attorney too next year. Von Karma will never beat the two of us. Right. Although I hope to clear Mr. Master's name before you become a lawyer. If Von Karma is to be my opponent, he'll want the trial ended in a day. That's right. We have to save Master Jeff as fast as we can. After all, this is you we're talking about. I'm sure you'll beat Von Karma. Oof. Jeff Master. Alone in a dark cell. Arrested on false charges. I must expose Von Karma's lies if I am to save him. Man. Gregory was a seriously good dude. Honestly, it all just makes me hate Von Karma all that much more. It was already apprehensible what he ended up doing to the guy, but after seeing just how good of a person he really was and how much he was dedicated to his job and helping people... God, I hope that guy is rotting in jail. <sighs> Let's keep going.